there's a way that you can form the Mongol Empire in under 15 years in EU4. And in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how. This involves some sneaky rebel management and truce breaking, and the end result is a really strange version of the Mongol Empire that you won't expect. But it does give you this very hard achievement that only 0.1% of players have, so give it a go. In order to prepare for this video, I lived for months in a Mongolian yurt, where I watched a random white guy eat my soup. In recognition of this traumatic event, I'm asking you to subscribe. After all, we do have daily content, and if we hit 100,000 subscribers, Tom and I will be flying to Ulm to film a video. It also really helps us out. I actually don't have the Khan achievement, so this would be a perfect way to demonstrate it. So this was actually shown to me in the Discord um, from a Reddit post from this user, and I was surprised to find that it does actually work. So let me show you. First things first, we need to get independent from Oira and take these two provinces. Now you can either play this safe uh, and get a bunch of allies, which I think I'm going to do, or you can attack Oira before they get any other allies. The issue being they do start with an insane general because of this guy. It's probably a smarter idea to wait for Ming, but I don't like waiting. Oh, uh, uh, okay, right. <laughs> Jesus Christ, that was close. This guy is having an awful time of it. He can't escape a 2-5. We do have a 2-3, but it's not the greatest. Okay, when do you arrive? The 22nd, the 13th. You get out there on the 12th. Out and back in, boys. Out and back in. Right, the hopes is we'll stack wipe them before this troop gets in. Okay, and that's why you scorch the earth. Oh my god. Okay, we lost that, but we, we won most of them, to be fair. All right, I am going to attack the guy without a leader first. That is the smart thing to do. Okay, right. So far, so good. This is kind of painful. That is very useful. Okay, a bit of luck here, boys. A bit of luck. This is... That's good. <laughs> and Ming has declared war. All right. Well, we're going to lose this mountain stuff, but that's fine. We just need these two provinces. Just don't stack right them, please. Okay, good. Okay, the key part here is to take these two provinces before anyone else does. <laughs> that would be very upsetting if that did not take place. <laughs> Great, just got stacked by, by Saraki. <laughs> uh, I'm so desperate to get them out of here because I'm trying to be quick that I just, <laughs> I'm just making so many mistakes. I'm on minus three stability and I haven't even truce broken yet. <laughs> this, is, this is horrible. So I'll take these two provinces and I'll bounce. I almost completely forgot to do this. Right, we've got a culture shift to Kalka. We have to get rid of our syncretic faith. And now we have to convert these two provinces once they're finished coring. And yes, we are in a bit of a state, um, stability-wise. That That isn't really my fault, to be honest. I've just gotten really, really unlucky with uh, events and stuff. To be honest, I reckon we're... Okay, we're so low on stability that I'm actually going to speed run this. Um, <laughs> right, well... We need to wait for these cores to be done, and then we can get going. Oira has allied Korchin, so I'm going to try and pick up some quick war score against them and force them out of the war. Now, a little trick for beating the allies of people and forcing them out of the wars early is if they don't have any forts in their land, and you occupy this lot and they go and stand on the capital, you should generate enough war score to force them out. So right now, against them, I have six war score. See, minus 62. <laughs> so, that's not bad. He's already breached my capital. Jesus. No need to mess around with that. If they win... Okay, thank God they didn't win. That was a bit of a close battle there. Right, I'm going to try the same trick on Oira. Then we'll see if we can get away with a lightning fast war here. They're on 28% and low. That should be enough. Revoke cause. Okay. All right, so there are still Oira separatists here. That's fine. What we need to do is we need to convert them to Tengri. We need an advisor that's going to help us convert things. And I'm going to keep buying down these rebels. Stability cost. I'm going to save for the next six years doing this, I know. Healy Prestige. Did just take Miltech 4, which probably was a mistake because I'm trying to save up my military power to buy down the rebels. But that's fine. It's, okay. it's all part of the strategy. Yeah, definitely take Miltech 4. It's not a mistake. We're actually a relatively stable nation. <laughs> which is surprising. I suppose we could do it with one, but I just like the idea of having a second province. You know, I don't, I don't like being a one province miner. <laughs> I will warn you, this is going to be a weird version of the Mongol Empire. It's not going to be... It's hard to describe. It's not going to be the Mongol Empire as if you did it the proper way. Now, you'll see that there's still Oira separatists. That's because we have to reset them. We do that by making it go to zero. Refreshing. And now they are Mongol separatists. I'm going to try and drive up our war exhaustion to try and get these provinces to revolt, basically. Because they're currently at minus two, and we need them to be a little bit higher. 
Uh, that royal marriage with Ming actually is really helpful. Because I can do this. That should put it almost above the threshold. Okay. We just need to get our war resortion up. Come on, come on, Tobias, please. Just any province. Any province. Just, no. Okay, just... Any... Boys, any province, just just kind of stand there. No, you're going straight for... Don't go away. Okay, interesting. Yep, no, you're still walking around. I just need to just occupy anything. There's one. There you go. No, not quite. Okay. We're getting there. Okay, maybe we should clarify. Any province apart from these two? Not that one. Just <laughs> any province apart from that one. Don't try and just... Why would you <laughs> siege any one of my provinces that isn't the goddamn capital? <laughs> Mongol separatists. There we go. That's what we want. Quick. Right, peace out. Yeah, it was just a joke. It was just a joke. Right, where are you? Mongol separatists. Okay. Accept demands. So, as you can see, the Mongol Empire is a thing. Uh, it's strange because they're the Mongol Empire and we're the Mongols. But for some reason, they, the Mongol Empire gets cause. They have Mongol separatists, which creates Mongol Empire. What I need to do now is murder them. Come on. Take. We need to make sure we submit to the coalition first. Because if I take these provinces, then Oirat's going to demand them. So, I will... Offer tribute, suggest demands, do that. Take these provinces back. And then it's time to, after I've developed them as much as I can, we can go ahead, release Mongol Empire, and play as the release subject. Now, if I'm right, we should have we should get the Khan achievement now. There we go. <laughs> In about 15 years, we got the card achievement. It's described as very hard on uh, on Steam. That ranking is going to have to change. Because I just got that in 15 years. <laughs> That's brilliant. I like that. Now, there are some strange things about this nation. The first is that we have generic ideas. We have national ideas. We don't have Mongol ideas. We have just straight up generic random national ideas. Uh, there's also another cool thing you can do. So because we're the Mongol Empire, we can actually take the great Mongol state government reform. Which is an insane government reform that gives us 20% manpower, 20% force limit, yearly horde unity increase, movement speed, looting speed, reinforced cost, separatism, you name it. It's, it's wonderful. We're going to compound that with uh, more manpower. Do start with minus three stability uh, and no admin. <laughs> but that's fine. Gra they granted me a core. <laughs> I have a core on the Ming. The Ming has a core from the Mongol Empire. I think they're going to be a little bit concerned now. It is strange we, that we have generic ideas. I'll be honest, I was, I was hoping for Mongol ideas, but that's not how it is. Oh, and my emperor is an atheist. <laughs> I, okay. I didn't expect that. He's, um, he's an atheist. And again, I can't leave a mission unclicked. It doesn't make sense for me to take it. It doesn't. I should probably, I should wait until the manufactories era to, to do this um, for maximum gain, but I'm just not going to do that. We might actually have more development than the Mongols. Because this one's... I've got about 36 development. And he has about 14, 17, 21. Yeah, I think we have more development than our overlord. Of course, we are an empire. <laughs> A tribal empire. <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. He made him give back the land he took in the coalition war. This is just a messed up area. This is weird. Hmm, my main concern is that our horde unity is so low that our discipline is going to be about, what, like 97? Versus the Mongolians, probably 105. Excellent, that's an important miltech, which I don't th which they have. That's <laughs> okay. <laughs> I can't break free because my horde unity is just going down. Oh no. Oh, thanks Mongolia, I appreciate it. I'd, uh, money is not an issue for me. We would have to fight tributary overlord. No, we wouldn't. We wouldn't have to do that. It's a lie. It's a lie. Of course you would come in if I do it now. Okay. Right, that's good. That's good. Um, I don't know if I can be bothered to wait for my king to die. I'm way too impatient for that. I've got Korchin. Surely that'll be enough. And surely Ming wouldn't get involved, right? There are no mercenary companies with good generals. So I'm just going to have to make do with what we got. Which is going to be this guy. This guy. This is the worst that's ever happened to me. My Mongol separatists. Hey. Are they for me or for him? Oh, they're for him. This is awful. Ah, oh, screw it. Let's just do it. Caution lap my back. Let's go. Just don't get involved. Don't get involved. Don't get involved. Kind of confused as to why Oyer and Caution think Ming would get involved. Because I would assume that they wouldn't. 
Okay, that's not good. The AI is being smart. It's taking out my allies. We might have to smash and grab this wall. I am concerned that the Ming are going to enforce peace. Because they got 200 opinion of them. What do you think? Well, you're useless. They'd give me their independence. They give me their independence. They give me my independence, but it's kind of not worth it. Okay. That's really lucky because they haven't taken that. I'm, I'm getting out. I'm getting out. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. I'm not risking it. I'm going to border this lot because then I can fight them. That honestly, that looks good to me. That looks good to me. I'm going to raise all these provinces because they need the horde of unity. I'm starving for it. It's an okay amount of horde unity. Ming, please let me become your tributary. All right. Awesome. And now we just got to start declaring war on people because the horde unity thing is so bad. All right. Let's go to war. I wonder why they got a trident as their sort of symbol. It probably isn't a trident. I probably just generalized it as a trident. All right. Pardon me, but I need horde unity, which means I need to loot everything here. And I got to win some battles. What did I say about winning battles? We have low horde unity, so we suck in battle. But I need to win battles to get higher horde unity. So this is not a good situation for me to be in. <laughs> My day gets worse. I think I'm just going to leave him alive, you know? <laughs> I can't be able to fight all that. Ah, oh, finally some horde unity. We can all band together over the pillaging of our own nation, <laughs> apparently. Ah, oh, this is dumb. I'm outnumbered two to three to one. My plan is to get rid of Corch in the first way I got rid of them, which is send a bunch of men to go and occupy their entire country and just try and drive them out. 43% and they'll come out. Okay. Okay, that, that, would, that would have been dicey otherwise. All right, Corchin. Thank you very much for playing. And thank you very... Oh, thank you so much for the ducats. Things are starting to move a little bit. I'm assuming your capital get, is under siege. Or can I nip in and grab that? It's not under siege. Well, I'm going to nip in and grab that. Let's see if we can circle around and get them before the Mongolians do. Which doesn't make sense because we're the Mongolians, but it worked. <laughs> well, they peaced out. And why change a strategy that's been working for us so well? Yeah, I can just take 100%. There, we're starting to get somewhere with the Mongol Empire. <laughs> God, we clearly make a lot of money from trade, apparently. I'm glad I didn't wait for our king to die because he's now 43. Right, a 5-5-4. Five, five, oh, in fact, let's see, he's... A 5-5-4 five, five, results in a 2-1 general. Well, he can get in there anyway. Obviously, the Mongol government type is ridiculous. Uh, so that's definitely helping us out right now. <laughs> Just gonna interrupt myself by letting you know that I'm live on Twitch right now. So why not come say hi? But boys, I think that's where we'll leave it here today. I think I've proved what I, uh, what I want to prove. Uh, just to have a little bit of fun. We can claim the Carnate. And get started down uniting the Mongols, despite the fact that we are, in fact, the Mongol Empire. <laughs> Definitely an interesting uh, little discovery, that. And certainly not a very hard achievement anymore. I think we're going to have to change that on the wiki. Because, yeah, I don't think that counts. I'd actually be interested in doing a full playthrough as the Mongol Empire. Maybe on Twitch or something. Because it's a very interesting and weird start with underpowered ideas, but a really great Mongol state uh, government type. But yeah, let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Otherwise, be sure to like and subscribe. It really does help us out with the algorithm. The more you like and subscribe, the more YouTube pushes our videos to more viewers. So, you know, help us out. And I'll see you all next time. Goodbye. Huge shout out to all our supporters on Patreon. Most notably, JDow52, Cargon, Flyerton, and Henrique. Your support means a lot, guys. And uh, whilst you're here, you know, you could just click on this next video. It's right in front of you.